Hello and welcome to more modern Kim Draft. Uh, what do we got in this pack? Well, we got Thoughtseize. I do like Thoughtseize. Um, Mana Tithe. I like it a lot more in Vintage Cube, but I still think this card is absurd. Uh, basically, the higher power the format gets, the faster the format is, the better this card is. Because there's more turns where your opponents are, like, using all of their mana. Whereas, like, if you play this in, like, a normal limited format where you're, like, just drafting cards, you're less likely to have a good curve and, like, always use your mana every turn, so this card gets worse. So Modern Cube feels like pretty much the middle ground where it's pretty decent, but not as absurd as it is in Vintage Cube, where, you know, people could be casting, like, a 4-drop on turn 1 or something like that. Um, I like Thoughtseize. Grist is okay. Vanguard is good if you want to go aggressive. I think Manatide probably is the second best card here. Um, essentially, in Modern Cube, you just want to be efficient. Um, I'm going to take Thoughtseize. Um, there could be something for taking mana tithe because white is always open, you know. Um, but I just, I don't know. I really, really like this card. I've really been enjoying black red. Um, blue black is also good. Jace, I guess, counterspells in modern now, which is kind of cool. We could still open with Bloodstained Mire. We could take Void Voidwalker. This card is absurd. It's a new card. Two mana, three, two shadow. So it's essentially unblockable. Can't be blocked in this cube. And if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, you exile it. Uh, and then you can tap and sacrifice this card to cast... Or no, you can play an exiled card. So you can even take lands if they crack a fetch land. That's kind of awesome. So it's between the Voidwalker and Bloodstained Mire. I think I'm going to take the Voidwalker. This cuts black completely out of this pack. And I think I cut black completely out of the previous pack too. Um, that's something to look for here. There's Knight of the Ebon Legion, one of the better one mana black cards. It's one mana one two. You can pump it to hit for four. And then if your player lost four or more life, uh, you put a counter on it. So just really good. Like it snowballs very effectively. Eventually if you can get this up to four power, you don't even have to pump it to just keep getting plus one plus one counters every turn. Go for the Throat is good removal, good with Thoughtseize, Voidwalker. Um, not a whole lot of other good cards here. I guess Oncrop Crasher is decent and things like that. I'm tempted to take Go for the Throat, but Black has a lot of removal, and I guess one drops are a lot more rare. So we'll take the one drop. Okay, so there's not really a good Black card in this pack. I mean, Languish is good, but for a completely different deck. So now we need to figure out what else is open. Uh, Vindicate could be a sign. There's some white cards here. They're not incredible. Cloud Goat Ranger is decent. Uh, Shatter Skull Smashing is good. Cryptic Command doesn't really go with what we have going on over here. So I don't think I'm going to take that. I love Hard Evidence. I love the Crab. I just love the artwork. Everything about this card. One of my favorites. I'm leaning towards Arid Mesa, but I do like Vindicate too. But I think if I get like a black-white duel, Arid Mesa will be good. Although Fetches are worse. I'm just going to take this card. Uh, Arid Mesa can get Blood Crypt, so that's good. I think I'm going to take Rankle, though. I'm um, just get, again cutting black really hard. Rankle is very solid, and, like, I could take a Blood Crypt and then have Arid Mesa for better mana. I do love black red, but I think Rankle's too good, and again, this lets us cut black even harder, which is just a color I guess I like being in. I don't know. Um, that's kind of a late Snapcaster Mage, but we have one spell, so that's not great. I could just take Agadim's Awakening. Um, this card is really good in the later games. Um, I made fun of this card in Vintage Cube because a lot of the times the games go too quickly where like getting back creatures matters. Modern Cube is quite a bit slower and so this effect is much stronger because it's like land, right? It's not too much of an opportunity cost. But then imagine a late game I cast this for like four. I get back like Knight, Dalphy, Voidwalker, and Rankle. That's just very good. So I think I'm going to take that. Field of Ruin is interesting. That's a relatively late sensor as well. Ooh, Pack Rat, Fabled Passage, Legion War Boss. So blue seems open, red seems open, black feels open. Um, I mean, I've taken a black card every pack. That doesn't mean it's necessarily open, though. Um, and we're not going to really get many black cards for the second half of this pack, but a Pack Rat's too good to pass here. Okay, so Inferno Titan coming around is surprising, at least. Um, Isolated Chapel alongside Arid Mesa does help us go white, if that's the thing we want to do. But I think blue, black, or black red seem to be more open i could take an inferno titan it's just a good card yeah i think i'm gonna take the titan white didn't feel particularly open there's a gray merchant that is a, a decently strong card in this um type of deck there's also beaumont courier if we want to be more aggressive but i love gray merchant i think there's a phyrexian obliterator here and i think the swords are essentially unplayable like i know there was a game that i got beaten by the protection from green and white sword 
But it's just kind of random, like, if your deck happens to be green and white. Like, if someone plays the pro green and white card against me now, like, what is that going to do for them? Basically nothing. Um, Terror of the Peaks, 5 mana 5 4. Um, it's harder to kill, and then whenever a creature enters, it deals damage to the power equal to equal to that power to any target. That's just fine. Um, I could take Seer Sacred Foundry, but I guess Searing Blaze is more likely to be relevant. On Crop Crasher versus the Mother Cards is okay. I guess I don't have any uh, redrops in my curve right now. There is a Vindicate, but there's also Phoenix of Ash, and I, I'm feeling like. Red, yeah, red is way more open than anything else. There's Exquisite Firecraft. Being able to go face is pretty useful. Double red is going to make it more challenging, but I think this is just the better card. There's the Young Pyromancer. Tectonic Edge. All right, well, black red was wide open, or at least red was. I could even see a world where we cut black and just go mono red. Because, like, there were so many red cards. We got Inferno Titan into Searing Blaze. Like, all of these red cards were the last picks out of that pack. And we'll see the benefit of like drafting the open lane in the next two packs where we just get everything we could ever dream of. Uh, Path to Exile is good, but I don't think we're in the colors for that. We could take Whip of Erebus, kind of like just taking Dreadbore. It's just efficient removal, much better in Modern Cube, which is very creature and planeswalker heavy than some of the other ones. Uh, Bergy is good, Spyglass is good, and I think Whip should come around. Thunders can take Dreadbore. Even if Whip doesn't come around, like, you, you only want so many 4-drops. Here there is Rampaging Ferocidon, Gifted Aetherborn, Lightning Strike, Persist. I do like the Ferocidon. Preventing your opponents from gaining life is very important. Uh, Lightning Strike is also relevant, like, you do need some amount of burn. If we do end up going the Young Pyromancer route, that's pretty useful. And Lightning Strike is more likely to get picked up by someone who's playing, like, Control than the Ferocidon. So I guess I could see taking Lightning Strike and trying to wheel the Ferocidon. Like, they're both pretty good for the deck. Um, and there's not too many other cards I want. Like, Gifted Aetherborn is okay, but it's really hard on the mana. So I'm going to take the card that's just a little bit worse, but it has a much higher chance of having this guy come around. Whereas I, I just don't think Lightning Strike wheels. Ooh, ooh, okay. Lightning Bolt Lava Claw reaches Zergo. Um, Yawgmoth, maybe. So I think, again, we're going to do the same pick. Lightning Bolt is absurd, and there's very little chance it comes around. There's a pretty decent chance Lava Claw reaches comes around. I just want to point out this art again. I really love this style, and this card just looks beautiful. So hopefully we can get that for that reason, but also it's very good for our deck. We'll take that. Um, honestly, at this point, we might just be moving into Mono Red because like, I haven't seen many black cards, and all the red cards we're getting are just absurd. There's Flame Slash, Walking Ballista, P and Kieran Nalar. Um, I don't like Phyrexian Revoker in Modern Cube as much. It's good against Planeswalkers. The benefit of it in Vintage Cube is that it stops Moxes and Signets, which I don't think are in this cube. So, it, like, not being able to snipe their mana just makes this quite a bit worse. Uh, I guess you can name Fetchland, which is okay. I'm just going to take a Flame Slash, though. It's really efficient removal. So, this is Black White. We need Red Black. Fixing, otherwise we're like pretty much stuck. We have way more red cards than we do black cards, so I think I just take Abbott over Liliana or Never Return. Um, it also helps the curve quite a bit more. So Crypt Breaker is a card I would like to have, right? It's an aggressive one drop that does things, but if like we don't have any black fixing right now, so I could just be moving off of black. We'll see. I, I like Frenzy quite a bit. It looks decent in this deck. I also like Hero. Uh, quite a bit less than Frenzy, so I guess we're just playing main... <sighs> we do have Inferno Titan. And Blood Crypt is, like, in the next pack if it is here. So if we take Wooded Foothills, we could get a Blood Crypt. And that would make things a lot easier. How greedy do I want to get? Let's go for it. Ooh! The Bringer of Glory and Koth. Um, okay. I don't know what's better in this cube. Koth is better for doing raw damage. Glorybringer is just, like, an insane magic card. I think it's the next pack that would have a Blood Crypt. If we do get Blood Crypt, then I can at least play like Thoughtseize, Knight, and Pack Rat. The double black cards are a bit more dubious. I don't think Grey Merchant is getting there. We just haven't really like seen a lot of black. Oh, this card's insane. But so is this card. And I don't really have many fives. I think I'm going to take Koth for curve considerations. I do love Glorybringer, but I don't, I don't think I can get there. Here's Hazard. Mistress Factory is really strong as well. When you're playing mono red, one of the things that differentiates good mono red decks from not great is like, I don't even know if I'm playing mono red, but in general, you, you have all these land slots, and by taking a card that 
replaces a mountain, but then can attack for damage. It just upgrades your deck in a way that taking like, you know, Inferno Titan for the sideboard just does not do. Um, I think I'm going to take Hazard here though. Hazard's really good in both black, red, and just mono red. Um, so this might have been the Blood Crypt pack. I'm not sure. I don't think I have the mana for whips. So I'll just take Bergy. Yeah, we're not getting Blood Crypt, but the Rampaging Ferocidon Gambit did pay off. So we did get both playable cards instead of potentially just getting one. So I like that. Um, Zergo came around. Yeah, I guess Black just got really cut. We're still going to get enough playables, I think. But I don't know. I'm going to move all these black cards over here and just see what my mono red curve looks like for now. Um, we need a lot more two drops. This this curve is really bad right now. And you don't really want to play Bergy in mono red. Although the horn side, if you have a lot of burn, is actually interesting. Uh, Magma Opus. I mean, I think a Liliana. I don't know. Trip Breaker versus Hero. Yeah, we'll take Hero. Rip on Craig. I mean, we have decent green fixing now. So that's something to look for. All right, this pack, we do have a blight step pathway. Um, so the problem is this is like literally one black source and red is so open. I think it's likely we're going to be able to get enough playables in the next couple packs where I don't need to play black. The black cards I have are pretty decent. Um, I'm not playing Liliana, but like Thoughtseize, Knight, Pack Rep, Dreadboard would be good. Blood Crypt I already passed. So like there's really no chance of me getting that. And this is the downside of Modern Cube. I don't know why they don't have the second set of fetchable lands, like the cycling ones, or even the Triomes. I think the Triomes are modern legal. Um, but anyway, we're going to take this Swift Spear just to lower my curve a little bit. I have Lightning Strike, Searing Blaze, Firecraft. Actually, Swift Spear is not even that good here. I could just take Lava Coil and just go bigger red. Actually, I kind of like doing that. Just take the removal. Ooh, Chandra. Glad I took Lava Coil with Chandra. I love this Chandra so much. I need more spells, um, but I think we can get there. This card's insane, and we're passing not a whole lot. So we'll take her. I mean, the beauty of her is like she also just hits for damage, right? She makes two 1-1s one that attack. She can pump up your other Planeswalkers like Koth. I like Dismember. I like Sweltering Sun's kind of Earthshaker Kendra. We can hope will come around. I'm going to take Dismember to lower the curve because, again, all of the red cards have been wheeling. Needle Verge Pathway. See, this looks like it should be a black flip side, but it's not. Okay, well, if we had gone black, Liliana would be good and other things, but I think we're going to take Eidolon. Um, this card turn two can really do a lot of damage to certain decks. Um, I do like Magmatic Sinkle and all that, but um, I think that's fine. Flinkling Yearling is insane. Rekindling Phoenix is very good. There is a black red, but again, I think we're just off of black. Our curve is good enough. Um, I'm going to take the Yearling and maybe Phoenix comes around, but I just don't need more four drops. There's Treasure Map, there's Perforos. This is whenever any creature enters. So right now in terms of token makers, I have P and Kieran, very good with this Chandra. Um, and I don't have a lot of other token makers. I'm gonna take Treasure Map and maybe we can go into a little bit like more of a big red. We'll see what happens. Ooh, Char is very good. Um, Soulscar Mage is just okay. We have a Monetary Swiss Spear that's probably gonna come around and we might not play any of them. Char. Is just direct damage we can get off Chandra. Season Parmancer. Okay, that gives us the token generation we're looking for. Um, so now maybe Hero of Oxen Ridge is playable. So we're not playing any of these. I could just take this. Um, there's also a Swift Spear. I have enough playables. I guess this has like very minor upside with Dismember. I'll just take this Swift Spear though. I'm just not playing black. So we start need to start making cuts. Um, at this point, I'm feeling like Hero of Oxen Ridge. I, think I don't have Zealous Conscripts. I don't want to play against Sphinx's Revelation, I guess. And I know the, the heat drafting is like super minor, but I'm not playing Kiki Jiki in this deck. It's good with like exactly Inferno Titan. I guess that's kind of decent with Season Parmancer too, but it's a five drop. Like I took Koth over Glory Ringer because five man is just so much more. So like I could cut, this is 22. So I would need a few more playables. I guess I could bring back Hero. This is 23, so this would be 17 land. Okay, Kenra's perfect here. Just a solid two drop. So now maybe I can cut this. Ooh, Sinkhole, I like that a lot. So we play that. Phoenix, okay, Phoenix is way better than Hero. Get out of here, Hero. Perforos is okay, whatever. Showed all the skulls is also interesting, but I only have one Arid Mesa. And there's a Soul Scar. So Red was just so unbelievably open that whole draft. And now we get to make the deck. So we're not playing Rupon Craig. 
I think I will play the two fetches just to thin my deck like slightly. Uh, I like Hazard, Phoenix, P and Kieran, Koth, Dismember, Swift Spear. We have Dismember, Bolt, Flame Slash, Searing Blaze, Lightning Strike, Lava Coil, Char. We have kind of enough. I think it's a fine card, but not an insane card. A lot of haste. The stack actually looks fairly decent, to be honest. I guess I could just cut Magmatic Sinkhole and then bring it in in matchups where I need removal because all the rest of my removal goes face. And this one can't be flashback with Chandra, which is, you know, it does matter a little bit. 16 land with two fetches. My curve stops at four. That actually seems okay. All right, let's try this. I will see you guys round one. Oh, right, we're playing against cheap tricks. We're going to go first. Um, no, this is way too many lands. Yeah, this hand is like essentially the same, but it just has more proactive cards. Like if you're going to keep a bunch of lands, you want to at least have some payoff, right? If I draw fourth land, I could play Rekindling Phoenix. If I don't, I can do other things. Fling Tongue Gearling is a bit awkward because it does kill itself. Like you need something to target. Same with Searing Blaze. So maybe this hand is still also bad. I don't know. Hopefully they just play um, two mana Jace. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah, just play Flip Jace here, opponent. Okay, they play blue white. Mountain, attack for two. We don't get hit by Condemn or anything, we'll pass turn. They bounce my young Pyromancer. All right, I hope their next turn, I guess they're just gonna play this end of turn. Inevitable Betrayal, what is that? Their target opponent's library for a creature card and put it into play under your control, okay. There are worse things. I'm just gonna get down the Phoenix. They already bounced a creature. Um, Phoenix trades very profitably with Brazen Borrower and I can go like, Young Pyromancer into Searing Blaze or Lightning Bolt. Light of Hand. Okay, so they're like all in on bribery. Good thing I'm not playing Inferno Titan. Um, P and Kieran Nalar is like marginally concerning, but not the end of the world. Flame Slash. Okay. So let's go Young Pyromancer. Attack for damage. See if they flash in and block. They don't. All right, we'll just pass turn. Turn off auto yields. And I think I will... I can Searing Blaze the Brazen Borrower while they're tapped out, or I can wait to draw a land, or I can even Flame Tongue Yearling, but I guess I know they're getting a creature, so Flame Tongue Yearling is going to have utility. I'm just going to kill this right now. Getting a 1-1 one -one seems pretty worthwhile. Brawl, okay. So I can like Lightning Bolt or Flame Slash Brawl. More exquisite. I think I just want to cast this with Kicker. Right, it's going to be a 3-3. Three -three. If they counter this, it's a little bit annoying. Sensor, yeah, okay. They get to draw and discard, then they get a creature I control next turn. They discard Force of Negation, okay. Their hand must be very good. So I'm trying to think what they can get. Not a lot of the cards are amazing for them. Hazard doesn't really work because their hand is full. Rekindling Phoenix is in play. It's got to just be P and Kieran Nalar. Okay, never mind, they're getting Hazard. Ah, that's why. Wait, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> Hazard Dream Trawler is like the ultimate non-bow. Bizarre. Um, oh, no, no, it's not because they can discard a bunch of cards to let Hazard... Okay, that makes some sense. Um, so I'm so close to being able to kill them. I can Flame Slash the Dream Trawler. And if they, then if they block the Phoenix, that goes pretty well for me. I think I want to do that. Yeah, we're going to start by Flame Slashing here. They can discard a card to give Hexproof and tap it. But now if they don't block my Phoenix, even if they do, like both cases are pretty decent for me. Just attack with Phoenix. Now they take it and they die. Yeah, Firecraft, you. Or no, let's Lightning Bolt them first. If they don't counter the Lightning Bolt, they just die. Okay, Firecraft them. Can't be countered. Nice, okay. Um... So I'm a bit scared of their bribery card, but in general, it's just pretty bad against me. Like rekindling Phoenix is the scariest one, but it takes them like until turn seven to get there. And I'm a fast deck when I, I could get rid of like flame tongue yearling for like a searing blaze, but they have enough targets that I think it's worthwhile. Magmatic sinkhole does deal with the, the life linker, the giant creature. And they're running sensor. I guess dismember also deals with it. Because they're playing white, you know, I think I'm actually going to bring in Hero of Oxen Ridge and Soul Scar Mage instead of Rekindling Phoenix, just because this card is so hard for my deck to deal with, whereas if they get this, it, like, doesn't really matter. Off of the Hammer, because we're just going all in on damage, and then I could cut, like, 
I don't know. I could cut Searing Blaze, or I think I just get rid of Flame Tongue Yearling for Soul Scar Mage, just so I can be slightly more proactive. Uh, actually, we're gonna get rid of Lava Coil. That makes more sense. We'll try that. Well, this hand looks good. Let's hope they play a two drop on turn two. They have a lot of um cantrips, which are bad for me, I guess. I don't know. Ooh, Ferrothodon, okay. Pretty good, pretty good. Soul Scar Mage turn one. Turn two, just play Jace. Yes! <laughs> All right, this went really well. So this deals damage equal to its power. So we just Flame Tongue Yearling down the Jace. And that's insane. I mean, that's I'm really glad I have that instead of Lava Coil. Hit them. Next turn, we can Rampaging Ferrothodon. Or we can play Abbot of Carol Keep if we want to hit four mana on turn four. Show game log. I want to see how they opted. Okay, let's start over. Show game log without chat. They put a card on top and they drew a blue. Okay, they could have Sensor. What do I want to do here? I guess I'd rather run Abbot into Sensor than run Rampaging Ferocidon. Okay, land? No, Eidolon. All right, well, just play Swift Spear. If they have Wrath of God, I think they need to hit a White Source to even get there. Going out, and the next turn we can... Well, we'll see what happens. This is, they're exiling something. Oh, just bouncing that, okay. They definitely do not have a board wipe. Oh, maybe they do, they just hit double white. Cause it, it was pretty clear from last turn they did not have, or it was most likely from last turn they didn't have a fourth land. Well, they have Brazen Bar where they're passing with all of their mana available. Where they're thinking about it. They're tapping mana and then not doing it. Okay, we draw a land which is really nice. I can play Hero of Oxen Ridge. This is creatures with power one or less. Um, that runs into sensor, which they could easily have here. Um, there's like a like 30% chance they have it. They only have four cards in hand. I think I like just swinging out for now. And then playing Rampaging Ferocid on post-combat. Okay, they're down to 11. Play this dude. Bell Queller. Okay, that's actually good news. It tells me they're not going to board wipe. So I could just play Soul Scar Mage. Then I have Lightning Strike. And they could have Spell Quellered my Hero of Oxen Ridge. So this sequencing worked out a lot better for me. Of course, they Miracle Temporal Mastery. Okay, that's not great. But if their play is just attack and then play Brazen Borrower, I'm okay with that. They only have two cards in hand. Old Omens can't block with Hero of Oxen Ridge in play. All right, just no flying hexproof nonsense cards, please. <laughs> no, Glendalendra! Okay. If their last card is censored, this can go really badly. Ooh, this cannot be countered. Okay. Mm they have one card. If it is censored, Hero Vox and Ridge is really awkward. So I think I just want to Firecraft the Spell Queller. Let me think about this. If I play Hero, they can Spell Queller block Soul Scar Mage. Yeah, this has got to be better. I get triple prowess triggers too. Oh, <laughs> and they sacrifice their Glenelendra. That's so good. Wait. Oh, you can only... Ah, uh, never mind. It can only not be countered if you have more spells than... Okay. Well, we can still attack with these. I was wrong. I was wrong. I just thought this was always uncounterable, but it's uncounterable only if you have spell mastery. Okay, but they're down to nine. They have one card in hand. The last card they have is Chase the Mind Sculptor. Okay. Okay, so they Jace Brainstorm. They're now up to two cards. They have Flame Slash and Lightning Strike. Okay. I guess I Flame Slash the Spell Queller and then Lightning Strike it. And then I get to kill the Jace. Or potentially just kill them. Prowess, Prowess, Prowess. Lightning Strike this. That's a lot of prowess triggers. Pass to this. Um, so now we get to attack. They only have two cards in hand. Okay. <laughs> so let's see. They block here and they take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They go to one and can't play any creatures. Seems good to me. See you guys next round. Oh, right. We're playing against city noise, which is like my least favorite thing ever. I really, really don't like car, like car traffic sounds. <laughs> Weird anecdote about me. Um, we have the one landers that I've heard about. I'm going to mulligan this hand. Like, even if I get up to two lands, this hand doesn't really do anything until I get farther. This hand is a bit better. We're just going to get put back a land. I, I at least have a curve, right? I go Eidolon into Phoenix. Like, 
yeah, we have more lands than we would like, but as long as we draw like a spell or two or some four drops, it's going to be pretty nice. We're playing against the same deck we saw last time, I guess. Ooh, Searing Blaze. All right, opponent play Jace or Baral. That's my only ask of you. It's literally the same deck. Slide of hand into two lands. I just don't want to get Eidolon censored, but I guess it's better Eidolon than Phoenix against an opponent who's probably not playing. Ooh, I actually am pretty happy they used that on my two drop instead of any of these. They might also have Counterspell for Phoenix, then things get worse. But we'll do our best. Okay. Get in there, friend. You got kind of a weird uh, look to yourself. You kind of look more like a Vulture than a Phoenix. Speaking of which, I did see a Turkey Vulture for the first time the other day. They're very weird. Abbot of Carol Keep. Um, I guess I play Abbot Free Combat because I don't want to play Hazard just yet. I could hit a land. I could also hit a two drop. Subtlety puts it on the top or bottom of their library. Okay. Um, do I want to draw Abbot of Carol Keep? I think so. Because I could just go land Searing Blaze this, which ended up quite nice. Hit them for two. Next turn I can go Abbot. If I draw a land, that's great. The only thing that's bad with Abbot is hitting a four drop. Coalition Relic doesn't hopefully matter. Now, I guess I do play this guy pre-combat still. See what happens here. Land. Not a four drop, just a land. Ooh, Zergo's good. Um, I guess I just want to cast this. I'm running into a board wipe here, but that's okay because I have Hazret post board wipe and that's like pretty good for me. My opponent only has three cards in hand. They're down to 11. Oof, okay. Well, um, I guess I want to draw Abbot into Phoenix. Then Zergo. I don't think that's likely to come up, but land off the top is perfect here. Perfect. That, Arid Mesa. I kind of do want to fetch because those were all good cards. Let's hit them for five. And that's why I overcommitted into the board wipe. First of all, the Phoenix was likely to be able to get back. It had to be like Terminus specifically. Um, and even if they did, I have this beautiful indestructible friend. Yeah, I think I will shuffle. Those cards are better than random draws and drawing a land here would be not great. Factor Fiction... Phantasmal Image doesn't do a whole lot. I kind of want to do like Cryptic Command versus the world. Have they played a land yet? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I don't think they have. They did not. So this land actually does matter. Um, so Cryptic Command Phantasmal Image gives them like a lot of time. I want to do that. I kind of want to give them like Cryptic Command Consecrated Sphinx. Those are all the good cards, but they're so expensive. But then I guess they could go this turn Cryptic Command. And the next turn, Consecrated Sphinx. This one lets them go like Phantasmal Image, My Hazard, Play a Land, Opt, and then still probably not work. Hmm. I don't know what to do here. I think we're just going to go with this. I don't know what's correct. But in general, it seems like giving them expensive cards versus cheap cards is in my best interest. So they did have a land. I'm going to fetch. So we draw Zergo. So... If I dash Zergo, they can Cryptic Command tap my team. So we are going to discard a card. Do two damage to each opponent. Then move to combat. They have to either tap it or bounce hazard it. Okay, so that goes to hand. I can Lightning Strike them down to one while they're tapped out. One, two, three, four, five, six. They're going to have mana available. Yeah, let's put them down to one. Then they're going to play Consecrated Sphinx here. Maybe I shouldn't have given them Cryptic Command, because that was like their only answer, because they couldn't have cast Consecrated Sphinx before. If I gave them like Cryptic Command Phantasmal Image, then they like would be in trouble with Hazard. Okay, but I do have that 4-drop that just instantly kills them. Oh, <laughs> okay. Let's go Hazard. No, they have Counter Magic. No! Um, given this, I'm going to hold Monastery Swift Spear in hand. That way they might attack with, like, basically if I play Swift Spear, there's no way they attack with Consecrated Sphinx. If I don't play Swift Spear, maybe they hold it back. Glenn, okay, well that blocks, and this got a lot more awkward. I'm trying to think, if I didn't give them Consecrated Sphinx, right, if it was like Cryptic Command Phantasmal Image versus Consecrated Sphinx, that probably would have been better, because they needed Cryptic Command to survive that turn. Karn liberated, alright, give me the things. Char. Okay, well, we get to go Monastery Swift Spear. And then 
char their face. They have to Glenelendra. Then they get we get to force them to trade off Glenelendra, and then we're still drawing live to burn. And they have to hold back to block. Check them. I don't know. It felt like it was worth just going for right there. They have five cards in hand though. Sensor. All right. Sensor is worth knowing about. They probably just cycle it to be honest. <laughs> Metamorph the Consecrated Sphinx. Acceptable. So I think my only out is the uncounterable burn spell in my deck. I did draw a lightning bolt. Let's just do it right now before they draw. Do you have counter magic? Mm, they don't have counter magic. Okay, okay. They must have specifically counter spell in their deck. What did they discard? Did I get there? No, they hit it. No! Ah, uh, it was almost deterministic at that point though, so it's hard to be too mad. All right, so their hand is like very full. I have one more draw step. They have sensor. It, I think there must be no more counter spells left in their deck. They discarded Martial Coup. So counter magic, they have counter spell, disallow cryptic command, essence scatter, subtlety. Interesting. They're discarding the hand size. Discard plane. So they're just leaving monastery Swiss spear. Please say yes to both sphinxes. Oh, oh, they didn't say yes to both. All right, let's attack. See what they have. I mean, they're showing me more removal, which is good. Raisin Borrower, maybe? Blink of an eye? Okay. They draw and then kill me. Alright, that was a good game. So that was game one, I think. Um, Enigmatic Sinkhole does five. Consecrated Sphinx is six. They have Glenelendra. Lava Coil Exiles, which is useful. Again, I don't think I love Rekindling Phoenix. They have Terminus and stuff. I'd rather just have a hasty creature. And then I think I like the Soul Scar Mage over the Flame Tongue. Because their deck is like all counter spells, and I'd like Soul Scar Mage in play is just gonna attack for a bunch. Yeah, that seems alright. Going first. Uh, a slow but resilient hand. I guess I'll keep this. I'm really weak to sensor, but that's kind of always the case, so. I wonder if they have Manatide as well. Just playing the old Caleb Gannon special. I draw land, so I can play Phoenix turn two, or turn three. They probably have sensor, but then I get to like play Koth or something. All right, let's stop drawing land. Okay, that goes through. I like that. They have three mana up now, so they have like disallow and such. Mountain. Um, attack for two. I could just pump up my Phoenix. I think I like doing that. Like just like if they have counter spells in hand and they're holding them up, I, I would rather not give them utility from them. Now they have four mana. I can play around sensor. Draw Flame Slash. So I draw Mountain. Um, I mean, I can keep pumping this Phoenix. Let's move to combat. They could Blink of the Eye with Kicker. Let's not play Koth. We're going to play P and Kieran here, I guess. Could pump it again, but now it feels like I want to play this card. This kind of forces them to use Counter Magic. Ugh, okay. Well, I'm glad I played that post-combat. Um, they don't get to Factor Fiction or anything that turn, though. So now I can go, like... Phoenix of Ash, they countered that. And then they don't do anything the rest of the turn. Because I just keep drawing land. Okay. Phoenix, please don't counter this. This allows fine. Escape, how many cards do I need? Only three. Okay, that's actually not too bad. Now we pass turn. They don't have double white. Consecrated Sphinx here, we can kill, but it would be really annoying. Narset is okay. Ooh, I don't like that. One, two, three, four, five. So they're quite a bit away on terms of land. If they have Counterspell for Koth, though, things get a bit more awkward. Ooh, Hazard's good. Let's go land, Koth. I'd rather have Hazard than Koth, I think. Yeah, that dies. Um, Phoenix of Ash costs four. Uh, I can kill Narset, or I can put my opponent down to nine. I think it's probably better to kill Narset. I don't have any card draw. Let me think about this. Killing Narset denies them a card draw. They do have five cards in hand. Next turn, if I draw a land, I can play Narset and Phoenix, and that hits them for eight, and they go to one if I Lightning Bolt their face, which seems good. Approach of the Second Sun costs seven. One, two, three, four, five. So they're pretty far from that. I think I'm better off burning face now. Pass turn. Let's see what, let's see what the damage is. If this gets Counterspell and then they, I can't cast Hazard, that's upsetting. Essence Scatter? Oh man. Alright, well, I got maximum punished by uh, doing what I did. 
But I think I can force them to Essence Scatter the Phoenix and then I'll still have Hazard. Lightning Strike. Okay, so let's do this. This, this, and this. I didn't know Escape you could uh, Essence Scatter, but now I do. Let's pass turn. Now I can Lightning Strike their face. Or save Lightning Strike if they have Consecrated Sphinx, I can double spell. Len Elendra. Alright, let's go face here, put them down to 6. Then I have Hazard, which they're like forced to chump lock essentially. Play Hazard. They've already used, they have Subtlety evoked. Okay, so that's going on top. Ah, that's pretty bad actually for me. Top. So I can play a land in Flame Slash. I think I kind of want to keep this land in hand. Because I could just discard it immediately to Hazard. It. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I can like Flame Slash Glen to turn up the Phoenix. I guess I know exactly what my next turn is going to be. And do I want to Flame Slash in that world? If they just cast, cast Approach? I think I don't. I think I want to hold Flame Slash so I could just discard it to Hazard. Because if they don't have an answer to Hazard, that damage will matter. They don't do anything. Alright, play Hazard. Discard a card to do two. Move to combat. Attack them. They chump. Okay, this is going better than I thought. They didn't do anything. Wow, their hand must be terrible. What is in their hand? All double white cards? Because it's not lands. Okay. <laughs> I'll take it, I guess. Um, Tectonic Edge it doesn't really do anything, right? It's non-basics. Their deck is all basic lands. Yeah, we'll just run it back. My one complaint about the modern cube is just that the fixing is so bad. Do I want this member? Maybe I want like a rekindling phoenix. Oh, well, it's too late. This hand's decent. Keep this. Basically, it turns out their deck is pretty weak to Hazard. Unless they draw a Terminus specifically. And I'm just going to play Abbott. I know I'm missing out on value, but let's just hope we exile a land. Because exiling a land here is similar. Ooh, they're going to Essence Scatter? Please don't be Sensor. Okay. I, I love trading for Essence Scatter there. A sleight of Hand. Yeah, if they had any non-basics, Tech Edge would be good, but it is what it is. Um, yeah, I'm going to play this into Sensor. If they had it last turn... <laughs> okay. I was going to say, if they had it last turn, they definitely would have ran out one of those. So they had to have drawn it this turn. They can play Jace. Glenelendra. Okay, well, I get to resolve Hazard. Which is pretty good. I can't attack because I just have all lands in hand, but at least having it in play is really scary. They opt. <laughs> okay. Master of Waves, I don't think I have an answer to. And now Hazard doesn't do anything. So that's cool. Um, I can't attack, so I guess I just do that. Play Zergo. And I could just keep Hazard in play, but I think I want to Flame Slash the Glenelendra. He comes back. And then I have the ability to discard this land to Hazard whenever I need to. Because they can't really attack with Master of Waves tokens, because I can just block. <laughs> of course, now I discard. This is so bad for me. Um, and they have Glenelendra protection. I don't think there's a way out of this for me. I guess we'll see. Yeah, this is unfortunate. Lava Coil. Um, somehow I need them to, like, not have a Glenelendra. The, the, like, I would actually be fine if they didn't have, like, all of the answers. Okay, well, we're playing for the late game, I guess. We do that. We can Lightning Strike the Glen. And then I have to draw, like, some answer next turn. Or just hope they tap out for Approach. I guess I'm better off hoping they tap out for approach. I get like one turn to do it, because Hezret's still in play. I guess they have this, but... So... This doesn't decrease the clock. I think I still do kill her. But Baneslayer Angel is definitely a problem. Narset, yeah. They do with... Alright, I need a burn spell this turn. Mountain. Not quite. Not quite. Guess I have like maybe one more turn if they like whiff again on Narset. All right. But this is <laughs> this is just kind of silly. They got full value off Glen, full value off Manatithe, Master of Waves, Baneslayer Angel, Narset. I think they should be attacking with the elementals, but I guess this works too. I get to Season Paramancer. 
Okay. They do draw Chandra. Go Chandra. If they counter her, we just hard lose. But they only have two cards in hand. <laughs> this pull from tomorrow. All right. Well, I get a turn with Chandra in play, I guess. So I can Lava Coil. We can go land Lava Coil this. Flashback Lava Coil. Here. So that's gone. My attacks are still just non-existent though, so... <laughs> uh, but they kind of have to swing out at Chandra. I mean, they just drew five cards, right? I would be so astounded if I win this game. They swing with Master Ways at Chandra. They have to. Yeah, protection for my whole deck is pretty good. If Chandra's down. I do get to attack with Hazard, maybe? I mean, they can have like Cryptic Command, Pull From Tomorrow, Breeze and Borrower, but... Coalition Relic, okay. And then approach term. <laughs> All right, well, they did answer their own protection from red creature, so now I can draw like Koth and be in decent shape. On crop crasher is not so bad. It's a 10 turn clock, okay? <laughs> That's pretty. <laughs> I mean, they only have three cards in hand. I have an on crop crasher and a dream. Suddenly, my position is not terrible. Rampaging Ferocidon. Let's. I don't think they have any flash creatures, so let's just attack, because I don't want to get cryptic commanded. Did they exile that? No, it's still in their deck somewhere. I don't care about Narset. Okay. They could have Martial Coup. I, I have to go for this. I have to play Ferocidon. Factor Fiction. All right. Um, honestly, a pretty bad Factor Fiction hit. Blink of an Eye. Counterspell is annoying. I can give them Counterspell and Sensor. How about just Counterspell and hope they have nothing? <laughs> counterspell planes. Yeah, you can have counterspell on planes versus blink of an eye sensor. They took counterspell. Okay. Wait. They took counterspell and then didn't counter anything? They must have martial coup. I'm so dead. I wish martial coup triggered rampaging ferocidon, but it doesn't. I'm just super dead here. Oh, wrath of. Wow, they have a lot of board wipes that I didn't see the other games. Full scar mage. I mean, they could counter this. They Cryptic Command my Soul Scar Mage. Somehow I'm still in this game, it feels like. I just need to see like one win condition from them. If they cast Approach, I'll concede. Okay. Actually, they just win, right? No. Okay, I'll concede. <laughs> All right, see you guys next round. All right, we're playing against Smash Lee on the play. Great hand. Great hand. Oh my gosh. Um, can we please not play against Blue White Control? That would be nice. So we're not going to play our fetch yet because drawing lands up to four isn't the worst. Oh, perfect. Am I just going to eat Flame Tongue Yearling a Rift Sower? Nice. So what are we going to do here? We get to go playing against green. I think Eidolon is going to be great. We're just going to go Eidolon now. It's going to hit us for a ton of damage, but that's fine because we're. it's going to hit our opponent for a ton of damage too. Next turn, I can just play Wooded Foothills. Ooh, green, black. Far seek sure. They take two. So here's the sequence. You ready? We go wooded foothills. Monastery swift spear. We take some damage. Don't even care. In their upkeep, we're going to fetch and then searing blaze the rift sower, so they don't get access to five mana this turn. So they cast it. Let's just make sure we don't skip through their turn. They take two, which is perfect. They cast it. Then we fetch. And because we fetched on their turn, this is why we're running uh, fetch lands here. We get to Searing Blaze on their turn. Killing this dude. That feels so good. They go to 10. <laughs> turn 3 down to 10, facing down Eidolon and the Great Rebel. Here's where we want them to play like a, I don't know, a Tireless Tracker, and then I can Flame Tongue Yearling kill it. They play Overgrown Tomb Tapped and Wolf Willow Haven, triggering Eidolon. Okay. Do you draw a lightning bolt? So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can put them down to one. Seems pretty good. Let's attack first and see if they do anything. I can't cast Eidolon Yearling because it will kill one of my own creatures. Just bolt their face now, get all the damage in that we can. Okay, <laughs> that game was done. They're playing like five color stuff or others. Um, I have not seen Dismember, but I feel like I want to be a little bit more proactive. Than having dismember without seeing their deck. We could bring in Soul Scar Mage. Yeah, alright, we'll do that. 
All right, game two. Let's hope they have creatures. I'm keeping this hand. It's really hard to mulligan, I don't know, a bunch of bolts and stuff. Um, no lands would be good. Oh, ooh, remember how I brought in Soulscar Mage instead of Dismember? Look how good it is here. Then they're going to play a two mana mana elf. No. Okay. I draw a land not ideal. Attack and see what happens. Rub decay. Okay. Uh, no point in doing anything then. I don't mind getting my one drop of Rub Decay, but I would like to draw a spell. Mmm, well, <laughs> Searing Blaze never looked better. But they're drawing all lands, or just playing all lands, I guess. Okay, that's getting a bit extreme. I do want to hold at least one land in hand for Searing Blaze. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 10 points of burn in hand. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> they have Thrag Tusk. Um, alright, I'm not going to char their face. I don't think I'm winning that type of a game. But, oh my gosh, what is with these lands? Searing Blaze, you, and Thrag Tusk. At least we kind of undid the Thrag Tusk. The problem is they still have a 3-3. Three, three. Um, past turn. This is way too many lands. I mean, I kept a 3-lander and then drew 4 lands. Which, you know, happens, I guess. Opponents tap in 5 mana really fast. Primal Command, they gain life. Alright, so the burning their face plan is just not going to happen. So we're just going to try and survive as long as we can. Resolve like a Hazard. Three mana Chandra, things like that, and take over the game that way. Because, like, they're at 36. Also, if they get, like, Eternal Witness, I'm in really deep trouble. Tireless Tracker. Okay, well, I can kill that one. Rip Sower Suspend. I don't care about that. So let's kill this. I don't want to take damage. I think, like, I need the game to go somewhat long. Oh my gosh, stop, please. <laughs> oh, man. All right, we've drawn eight lands now. Not ideal. Rift Sower suspended. We can kill the tracker. They do get to draw one card here. Kill this now. I don't want them like casting Farseek or something and getting tireless tracker value. So we both have infinite mana. The problem is my deck is full of one drops. Ooh, that was a really good draw. Let's Pyromancer away these two lands, I guess. Okay. Uh, I could cast Abbott, but I would really like to be able to like cast a four drop off of Abbott. This is going to become a game of attrition. So I could I think I just well, I guess I fetch, right? I, I don't have that many lands left in my deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, actually removing one land from my deck does matter. So my opponent's missing blue mana. I could see killing the Rift Sower here. They're missing blue and double black. Rift Sower also does block seasoned pyromancer. Let me fetch and see what else is in my deck. So all mountains and then just all spells. I think I'm going to let them have it. I could immediately regret this if they play like, I don't even know. Wrist? Okay, what do you do? Read a black insect creature token, then mill a card. If an insect was milled this way, you put a thing. Then you can sacrifice creatures to kill creatures or planeswalkers. I think I just want to char Grist now. It seems like... It seems worth getting rid of. They mill search for tomorrow. Okay. Gem Razor. 4-4 four, four, reach trample. Okay. Eidolon is kind of bad for me. Let's go Abbott into 4-drop. Good card. That's good. Rekindling Phoenix I like. Um, no attacks. Phoenix blocks really well. But we are in for a long one. I'm glad I didn't kill Rift. So where they didn't... Oh, now they're using it. Oh, they have Liliana. Uh, okay. You can get back some stuff. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies. I mean... I will still trade off Rekindling Phoenix for Gem Razor. She can make each player discard a card. You can get back a 3-drop, which would be Tireless Tracker. Do I want them having Tireless Tracker? Not really. Because then they're just drawing infinite cards every turn. I think I'd take a hit for 4 this turn. And then I, it, like, I want 1 or 2 more turns to draw removal for Tireless Tracker. That works. So now I can just Lava Coil the Liliana. That solves that. Then I can play Eidolon. Then I can hit with Phoenix and Abbott. And then I can trade off Season Pyromancer or Eidolon for Gem Razor or something. Or I could just hold back Phoenix and hit with Pyro Abbott. That actually seems better. Because Phoenix just blocks everything so well. So my guess is they're just holding lands in hand to go for that Liliana play. I don't know what else they could have. They have three cards in hand. Like, that's kind of a lot. Finding the old gods. Okay, so they're going to kill my phoenix, probably. 
and then Maelstrom pulls the token, they take two. Okay, so that was good. Then they get a forest, which doesn't really matter. They have one card in hand. Okay. I mean, my deck is mostly spells now, he says, as he draws the land. Um, I think I'm better off holding this in hand, and they're going to gain Death Touch in the near future. I'm down to nine. Let's attack with Eidolon and keep the rest back. Although at this point, the Eidolon might be hurting me more than helping me. So there's uh, one, two, three, four, seven is 11. There's five lands left in my 19 card deck. It's actually still kind of a lot. Okay, I'm actually kind of glad they attack with Gem Razor this turn. So let's double block the Gem Razor, take one. Ooh, they have a Woe Strider that hits them. Actually, Woe Strider's not that bad. Hits them for two. I get Season Pyromancer tokens. I just need to draw a spell. <laughs> oh man, Ered Mesa. You cracked me up, son. So now there's going to be, there was five, there's going to be three lands left in my deck after this turn. So they're going to all have Death Touch. I need to make some pretty rough blocks. Well, I don't know, the problem with Woe Strider is that it's just going to like really, they have so many cards in Graveyard, they could just keep escaping it. So it might actually be just better for me to take the hit or like, because it becomes a 5-4, right? Yeah. So, block their 1-1. One, one. I can double block the Rift Sower, but I think... I, I probably am just better off getting rid of my Eidolon. Because it also hurts me and my life total is quite low. I take 1. And this escape cost is 4 other cards. So yeah, they can do this at least 2 more times. So I need to draw like 3 mana Chandra, Lava Coil. Rekindling Phoenix can block. I guess they killed Rekindling Phoenix. I am going to fetch to thin my deck because I'm like basically dead. They have one card in hand. Yeah, let's thin. So there are three lands left in my 17 card deck. <laughs> oh boy. Um, I guess I keep these. I'm just super dead. They have one card in hand. So I'm dead to removal spells, even if they kill my thing, if they have a removal spell or don't, I mean, like this is so bad. It's got to be, like, specifically Hazard. Block here. Okay. Three mana Chandra and the Lava Coil. Earthshaker, Kenra. <laughs> uh, okay. Earthshaker, Kenra into Chump Block. Seems reasonable. I want to play out a land. And then I can um, Eternalize plus Chump Block. Okay, Shriek Maw, I'm dead. Okay, so they have Shriek Maw. Just a bunch of green-black removal stuff. Seems kind of reasonable. Uh... I think my deck is fine against them. Do I want Dismember? It's better than Soul Scar Mage. I like having the creature. I think being able to attack is pretty relevant. I wish I could have Rankle in this matchup. All right, game three. We're not gonna flood. Let's do this. Going first. Great hand. Yeah, this seems pretty good. Um, the fetch lands, I guess, also make Phoenix of Ash quite a bit better too. And I guess I'll save them for a couple turns. I don't mind drawing a fourth land. And like the fetching for thinning is pretty marginal. I have a lot of uh, early acceleration stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, my hand's good. I'm just going to play Abbot. Hopefully I don't exile like a good card. Please be land. Okay. Okay. Now I feel great. In that moment, Abbot of Carol Keep was like card draw because it exiled the land that I was going to draw. Take her Kenra. That'll be good. So we can go Phoenix of Ash. And here's where things get really awkward for the opponent. I just actually have spells. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> um, they get a land, they go up to four. I mean, they have Thrag Tusk and Primal Command, which are two cards that are quite good against me. Finding the Old Gods on Abbot. Oh, Gem Razor. That's fine. Is it? Is that fine? A lot of fetch lands. Um, Lame Tongue Yearling can do three. I guess I will trade off my Abbot here. So let's just swing, and then I can Flame Tongue Yearling with Kicker. If they don't block, then I just pump Phoenix, and that's fine too. Play this. Fetch. Mountain. Cast with Multi Kicker once. Okay, I was going to say, why does he not have damage? This makes more sense. Let's kill him, and then pass turn. That was really confusing, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was getting a phone call at the same time, but he had no damage marked on him. And I was like, did I make a mistake? So... What happens next? Phoenix of Ash just kills them. Or they play Thrag Tusk. I mean, this is 4 damage a turn. If I draw another land, it's going to become 6 damage a turn. And if I don't draw another land, I can cast every spell in my deck. 
Okay, it's a morph. So I can play Earthshaker Kendra and force them to flip up the morph, which I'm pretty sure is the card that gets back. Uh... Actually, do I want to do that? I could just Lightning Strike the morph. I guess Kendra hits for two damage too. So let's play Kendra. This will force them to flip up the morph if they want to do anything. I think this is... Ooh, can't block. Okay, never mind. I was mistaken. Play this. Attack them? What is this then? I really thought this is the one... Oh, they just messed up. Yeah, Den Protector. If they'd flipped up Den Protector in response to Earthshaker Kenra, they would be able to block here. But I think they're just dead now because of this mistake. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, let's just fetch and then pump. Because they fall to 5, I have 6 points of burn in hand. Um, they would be at 8. I guess they would still die to Phoenix of Ash. Alright, well... Kind of an anticlimactic ending. The last two rounds were super short. Rounds against City Noise were just kind of brutal. But uh, pretty good deck. Solid mono red. We tried drafting an interesting deck. I mean, you guys saw how open red was. I, I love playing red. So uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.